Welcome in to Seahawks Today by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us. Coming up on today's show, I got five free agent targets for your Seattle Seahawks who could start for this Seahawks team day one. We'll tell you who they are and break them down in just a matter of moments. Before we do, we told you yesterday we're doing a brand new sub battle all this week between our division rival channel, the 49ers Report. You guys answered the call yesterday. Subs were up. About 40 new subs gained this week. Niners did pretty good themselves with about 48 new subscribers. So let's see who's going to take the edge and win this subscriber battle this week. Subscribe now for free for the latest happenings on your Seattle Seahawks. Daily news and rumors. Live shows on Wednesdays, including tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, as well as or watch parties throughout the season as well. Turn on notifications so you never miss a moment. We'll get started with today's show. So let's begin with Yannick Ngakwe, who was one of the best players on the free agent market when free agency began, and he still remains available at this point in time. He has been a journeyman of sorts uh, in his days in the National Football League. Most recently playing with the Indianapolis Colts. Also has played with the Raiders, the Ravens, the Vikings, and the Jags. 2017 was the best season of his NFL career, as not only was he a pro bowler, but he also led the National Football League in forced fumbles that season. And one thing about Yannick Ngakwe, I got this stat from producer Sam, and listen to this, folks. He's produced at least eight sacks in every single season he's been in the NFL. Look at all those teams, and he's probably going to add another team that he's about to play for in another scheme. And it doesn't matter what the uniform he wears, what system he's in, he has been consistently good. He would be a very good fit for the Seattle Seahawks and what they're looking for to upgrade the defense. One thing, though, as pointed out by Greg Rosenthal of NFL Media, Sacks and QB hit sell, but Ngakwe's inability to stop the run is probably why he's likely headed to his sixth team in four years. Obviously, that's a huge issue for the Seahawks is finding guys that can stop the run, and that was an issue that plagued them in 2022. But uh, with that, you still have other options potentially to take care of that issue at hand. I have some other options for that in just one moment. Our pin comment today... Should the Seahawks sign Yannick Ngakwe? Weigh in on the comment section. Tell me what you think. Why for yes, in for no. Should the Seahawks sign Ngakwe or not? Let me know what you think. Why for yes, in for no. Weigh in on the comment section and let me know. We'll stay on the defensive side of the ball and turn our attention to Matt Ioannidis, who most recently played with the Carolina Panthers. Before that was with the Washington Commanders football team, whatever you call it. And Ioannidis, I'm surprised that he still is available at this point in time. He's not a superstar talent by any means, but he's not a bad football player either. Started 13 games for Carolina in 2022. In his PFF grades, you're looking at a guy that registered a 66.4 overall, a 63.1.5 in the run grade, and a 69.1 pass rush grade. So does a little bit of everything, not over the top, uh, not going to shock you with his talent ability, but he's not bad, and he's better than any option the Seahawks have right now as far as plugging up the interior goes. Watch out for Matt Ioannidis as a potential option for Seattle as far as that goes. Then we turn our attention to Deion Jones, and I know what you're thinking. Wait, don't the Seahawks have Jordan Brooks, and don't they have Bobby Wagner? The answer is yes, but we don't know right now when exactly Jordan Brooks is going to be coming back, if he'll be ready for the start of the season or not. So then you turn your attention to Devin Bush, and you say, would you rather have Deion Jones or Devin Bush as your starter? I take Deion Jones personally. That's why he would be a starter in this case that we present you here. Previously played for the Browns and the Falcons, was a pro bowler back in 2017, all-rookie team selection in 2016, I think that Deion Jones is still a very good player. Sure, he's had his ups and downs, some peaks and valleys, but he's shown enough flashes where I would take a chance on him, a flyer on him, where he's not going to cost that much, 
And to me, I would much rather have him on the football field than I would Devin Bush, quite frankly. Look at the numbers here from Deion Jones. I know last year wasn't great, but look at the previous three seasons. 137 tackles in 2021, 106 tackles in 2020, 110 tackles in 2019. That 2020 season, four and a half sacks and 11 tackles for loss as well. I don't think he's that far removed from what he did in 2020. Deion Jones, I believe, still has something left to offer, and I'd much rather have him start than I would Devin Bush, quite frankly. Pick one to sign. Would you rather go with Matt Ioannidis or Deion Jones? Seahawks don't have a whole lot of cash. They're not going to be able to sign everybody we talk about today. We're just doing our part to show you some of the options out there. Who would be the one you would sign between those two on defense? Type I for Ioannidis. Type J for Jones. I'm a little partial to uh, somebody named Jones, personally. Let me know in the comment section which way you feel one way or the other if you had to pick one. Father's Day has passed us, but now you may be wondering, what do I do to find something that looks really good for the summertime when I'm outside, you know, having a nice barbecue? Don't, don't do cookouts, by the way. Do, do a real barbecue. Uh, maybe I'm traveling, I want to represent my favorite team, just outside enjoying myself. Well, I got this snazzy-looking Seahawks t-shirt for you, as well as the ball cap, which is great for every occasion, whether you're mowing the grass or hanging out at a concert, whatever it may be, and you're rocking with your hawk out. Look at this. You get the combination, the shirt and the hat, both. Not just one of them. Both, folks, for $23.99. Well, supplies last. This is not going to be around forever. I'm telling you this, folks, because... We only offer this certain times of the year, so you better jump on it while you can right now at chatsports.com slash 12 combo. It looks good. You feel good. You'll be playing good as well, just like your Seattle Seahawks. Chatsports.com slash 12 combo for this shirt and hat combo for $23.99 while supplies last. Let's move to the offensive side of the ball now in the offensive guard spot. That's where we find Dalton Reisner. And the Seahawks are very young when it comes to the interior of the offensive line, and there's some question marks in regards to the veterans as far as what they've done this offseason and OTAs and minicamps. Let me present you Dalton Reisner, the former product out of Kansas State, spent four years with the Denver Broncos, and I thought that he was just fine. Dalton Reisner wasn't a guy that was moving the Rocky Mountains, but he was consistent and uh, I thought he was a good locker room presence for the most part, that he's an outspoken leader and well-liked. More on that here in a second. We'll, we'll show you. Uh, back in 2019, he was an all-rookie team selection, according to the uh, Pro Football Writers Association, and he's been available. You're looking at a guy that started 62 games over the last four seasons, played a lot of football there in Denver over the last year, few years. He has been a reliable source for that team. I'm surprised he's still hanging around at this point. Greg Rosenthal mentions this uh, about Dalton Reisner. Yes, he was that dude who pushed Broncos backup quarterback Brett Rippon on the sidelines on Christmas Day. In all honesty, Rippon probably had it going for him, to be, and if we're being real with y'all, uh, based on how things were going that day for the Broncos. He also started 62 games at an above average level since entering the league. So there's the info there on Dalton Reisner. One more name for you. I'm going to give you another edge in a familiar name to Seahawks fans. That is Jadavion Clowney. What do you think about the idea of bringing Jadavion Clowney? I know some of you are just like, oh, really? Are we talking Jadavion Clowney? Yeah, we're going to do that here. Jadavion Clowney, uh, he's played for the Texans, the Seahawks, the Titans, and the Browns. Uh, from 2016 to 2018, three-time Pro Bowler, second-team All-Pro selection back in 2016. And with Cloudy, because his play has dropped off a little bit and he's dealt with the injuries and all that, Cloudy is one of those bargain buys right now. This is not somebody that I think going into free agency that we paid much attention to, potentially bring back to Seattle, although Pete Carroll and John Schneider and company – in the last couple of off-seasons have brought back a lot of former players, including this year with Jaron Reed and Bobby Wagner. Don't rule out Jadavion Clowney because his market value is not that high right now. He's not going to demand a whole lot. We know that he's still a freak talent-wise out there. Uh, you go back to 2022, 
Wasn't great last year. Just two sacks, four tackles for loss. But in 2021, he was really good with nine sacks, 11 tackles for loss, and two pass breakups. Watch out. Don't sleep on the idea of Jadavion Clowney. So, before we wrap up today, let's recap one more time. The five free agent targets to watch for for your Seattle Seahawks who could start day one, Yannick Ngakwe, Matt Ioannidis, Deion Jones, Dalton Reisner, and Jadavian Clowney. We gave you five names. Now it's your turn to be the GM here on Seahawks today. Name a player the Seahawks should sign, whether it's one of those five or somebody else. Wait in the comment section and let me know. In the meantime, the show continues on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You can follow me there at Tyler Jones Live. I'll see you next time here on Seahawks Today.